viewers and welcome to another episode of Mechanics Brewery, where I review the various homebrew mechs created by the Lancer fandom. In this field guide to Sultan Special, Agrippa, from Harrison Armory, by Kaitave. Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa was a Roman general, statesman, and architect that just happened to be in a time where the Roman Republic is collapsing and Julius Caesar had a major back problem. Being a close friend to Gaius Octavius, the future emperor Caesar Augustus of the Roman Empire, Agrippa stayed by his side and won a whole bunch of military victories for him and the empire. The more important thing however, was his contribution in architecture, turning Rome into a city of marble with his own fund by restoring and reconstructing the streets, roads, sewers, aqueducts, as well as constructing new buildings like the Pantheon to dedicate to all the Roman gods the bathhouses, porticos, gardens, and many more. Most of these constructions lasted way past the fall of the Roman Empire and all the way to the modern days, a very visible monument to a bygone era. Named after the man, Agrippa is a combat engineer made to build roads and fortifications for an army to pave its way in. Looking at its stats, Agrippa has good health, two armor, slightly terrible evasion and excellent e-defense. It's rather slow as a big boy, has a good heat cap and excellent repair cap, and while its sensor range is just average, it has a good save target. As for its traits, it has three of them. First, field repairs, when Agrippa stabilizes, it may also spend a repair to repair a destroyed weapon or system of a nearby ally. Second, mass driver, for once per round, when Agrippa deploys a deployable system, it may place the system in a free space within range 10 and line of sight. And third, guardian, nearby allies can use Agrippa as a hard cover. All in all, this makes Agrippa a helpful ally on the battlefield when you need fixing or cover. As for its weapon mounts, it has one, a main slash auxiliary along with eight base system points. Onto its core passive, Agrippa can deploy the pack mule utility drone. The drone can move independently on your turn, but no other action, and if you can fly or teleport, it can fly or teleport too. When the drone is within your sensor range, you can recall it with a quick action, preventing it from being targeted, and to redeploy it again to any space within your sensor range, you have to spend another quick action. Every time you rest or get a full repair, the drone regains all health, and gets restored if it's destroyed. The pack mule drone itself can do all the following effects. 1. When you use bolster, you may pick another ally besides the drone to get the effects too. 2. When you stabilize, you may pick another ally besides the drone to clear a condition that isn't caused by themselves. 3. As a protocol, you can get the drone to deploy ballistic panels, immobilizing itself while also making it immune to any involuntary movement, and turning it into a two spaces large emplacement that acts as hard cover, oriented however you want. You can end this effect as a protocol. And fourth, when you print the Agrippa, you can apply a non-combat modification to the drone, it's basically personalization. If the game master decided that this modification can help in a skill check, you get plus one accuracy to the roll. You can change this modification in a full repair. As for its core power, Agrippa can activate rapid reconstruction with the pack mule utility drone. Upon activation as a protocol, the pack mule gets repaired to full health, even if it's destroyed. For the rest of the scene, your drone gains resistance to all damage, heat, and burn. And as a quick action, you can direct, oh boy, from the pack mule to an ally within range 3 of the drone and spend a repair to restore all their health, clear all burns, and one condition that isn't caused by themselves. As a summary, this tiny drone can do so many things it's rather ridiculous. So many opportunities to further support on the support, and even if it dies, its job will never end, and with it around, your allies will find a hard time in dying too. As for the rest of the license, you get bridge layer and Onija combat shotgun in the first section. Bridge layer, to get across. With a quick action, you can deploy a collapsible bridge onto the ground in a 3x6 free space right next to you. The bridge is flat, doesn't obstruct movements, and could be placed over difficult or dangerous terrain to walk over safely, even mines can't do anything, and so are any forms of pits, cliffs, and chasm, as long as both ends are touching the ground. The only issue is it can only support units up to size 3, and to pick it up you have to spend a full action. If you ever came across an environment as hostile as the enemies are, just put a bridge over it. Onija Combat Shotgun, Big Tube, Big Damage. Decent Damage, Cone 5, Decent Threat, and has knockback 1 but needs loading. 
All in all, good for blasting a group of enemies that came too close. Aside from a grip of frame itself, you get shock pylons and heavy lift gear in the second section. Shock pylons, I think I made a pylon joke already. After expending a limited charge to deploy a pylon with a quick action right next to you, it activates and projects in line 44 spaces high electric barrier originating from the pylon that can provide soft cover, but doesn't block movement or line of sight. Any character that starts their turn or moves into the field for the first time in a round must pass an engineering save or get taking 1d6 energy damage and become impaired and slowed, taking half damage only if they passed. With a quick action, you can reorient the barrier or turn it off, otherwise it lasts until the end of the scene. What can I say, this is going to give people quite a shock until it's destroyed, but you might need some ways to, well, persuade people to step into the field, or just kick them in. Heavy lift gear, when heavy lifting is required. As a protocol, you can deploy stabilizers and extend a crane, immobilizing yourself in the process. In this mode, your lifting capacity is tripled, and you could spend a quick action to either lift a prone ally in range 5, or move an ally in range 5 5 spaces in any direction both horizontally and vertically. This movement also ignores engagement and reaction, and the movement must end on solid ground or surface or your ally will, obviously, immediately fall. You may deactivate the system as a protocol. Good for moving people around to a whole new level, but you won't be moving anytime soon for using it. Either way, you will find plenty of uses with it. In the final section, you get System Optimizer and Parvati Class NHP. System Optimizer, some adjustments required. When you bolster, you can pick one of the following additional effects. First, Emergency Venting Protocols, the bolstered ally can cool to heat and may clear exposed status too. However, they can only benefit from this once per scene. Second, enhanced diagnostic sequence, the bolstered ally gains 2 over shield, and may clear either impaired or slowed condition as long as the condition isn't caused by themselves. A good thing to have around, might even actually make you use bolster. And finally, Parvati class NHP, let there be light. Your mech gains AI property and a full action called, Shining City. For once per scene, you can spend a limited charge and gain 5 heat cost to create hard light constructs in any free space within your sensor range. These constructs last until the end of the scene, dissipating afterward. They are also immune to all damage and can be stepped through, but anyone that starts their turn or moves into it for the first time in their turn takes 3 burn from the light. These hard light constructs are, first, a 6 spaces long, 4 spaces high wall that characters cannot draw line of sight through as all attacks and effects cannot pass through the wall at all, even those that ignore line of sight. Second, two size two areas which count as difficult terrains, these cannot be placed right next to each other. And third, one size two micro lance emitter which, for once per round as a free action, you may choose a target within range 5 and line of sight of the emitter to force an agility save upon them which they get 3 burn and knocked back by 2 spaces if they fail, taking 1 burn if they passed. At this point, you are no longer playing lancer, you are playing tower defense instead. These are some powerful emplacements with great properties, the wall can block sight, the areas can block movement, and the emitter can shoot anything that gets too close, use these well and any place can be a fortress. As a conclusion, Agrippa is one hell of a support platform that can deploy anything across the map while repairing any ally in need on the field. Its license is packed with powerful deployables and support tools to further aid your allies on the battlefield. If you want a mech that can raise fortification near instantly across the entirety of the battlefield and restore health and system of your allies no matter where they are, Agrippa doesn't shine but it will do damn well at this job. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.